So, Paul, Roland Future Design Lab. Uh, last time we saw you, you were showing us a new sort of software concept. Mm -hmm. How's things going? Things are going very, very well. Uh, Roland Future Design Lab, we're a little over a year old now, year and a half uh, old. Um, as you'll remember, I, I explained at the time that we kind of run out in front of product R&D, uh, and our focus is to explore emerging technologies, the frontier tech, changes in creative tech and workflows and everything around that. And a sort and of think tank. Yeah, a think tank. And, but, but I think beyond a think tank, it's if we latch onto an idea that shows some promise, let's see if we can validate that. And sometimes we can validate an idea just through pure research. Other times we have to go another step. And, and that means we need to build something and get it into the hands of music creators and, and, and get the feedback that way. And so you mentioned Tone Explorer. Tone Explorer was uh, something that we showed uh, here for the first time at Audio Developers Conference last year. Uh, and uh, the basic idea of Tone Explorer was we can take in music that somebody's created, uh, we can understand the characteristics of that music, uh, compare it to the characteristics of a massive sound library and then propose matches yeah. that might be things that people hadn't considered uh, before. And, and so uh, this year we've got a, a new uh, technology preview. I see, and there's something on the, ta on the desk There's something here. on the table here. So what you're looking at, uh, the first uh, wah wah disappoint is that this isn't something you can buy yet. Uh, it's, it's a technology preview, but it's the first time that we've moved into the hardware realm. Uh, we call it Project Lydia. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, anybody chooses to, uh, to Google that or you provide a link, uh, there's a story page. And uh, again, uh, the whole idea here as a proof of concept is we want to capture information. We want to understand how people, what they think about this and what they think about the concept of hands-on with what, what we're going to show you. Uh, and uh, so there's a survey you can take and things like that right. as well. So, so you've, you've been borrowing a bit of hardware from the uh, nipping across the, the, the corridor and saying, can we have one of these to, uh, <laughs> to, to chop up, please? Uh, you know the right questions to ask. <laughs> Technically, I'm not allowed to say that. Okay. But, but yes, we, we have brothers across the hall, the hall, brothers and sisters across the hallway, and we did, uh, we did hack a little bit of hardware to, uh, uh, to, to make this work. But the, the, the basic proposal of Project Lydia. We're, we're kind of exploring the intersection of two or three different realms. Uh, 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 one is, is uh, DIY. And I know probably from the first glance that people have just had it, this, it's not apparent, so what is DIY about this? Uh, but we've, uh, Project Lydia is running on, and we'll tell you more about this shortly, but it's running on a very common DIY platform called Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah. Uh, we don't hide the fact that it's yeah, running I on, saw, on I yes. saw some connections. Everything's exposed and, and uh, make of that what you will, depending on how adventurous you are, that could excite you uh, or it could concern you. Not, not really sure, that's what we want to try, try and find out. Um, but, uh, you know, so the hardware has a, a, a DIY element to it. Uh, the software that's running on that hardware very much has a DIY uh, element to it as well. We'll explain that a little bit more uh, as well. And so we're actually, we're reconnecting with a Nick you might remember back in the 80s, Roland had a brand called Amdec, right. uh, which stood for Analog Music Digital Electronic Kit. And for all of your audience, no, that doesn't make any sense. It's an acronym that just argues against itself. But uh, we made products in kit form for uh, about three years guitar effectors, a drum machine, a uh, line mixer, and things like this. And, right. and so we actually have a, a heritage with this DIY. Um, Amdeck. Yeah, but it's, it, I mean, not for a long time. This is No, not of... for a long time. But interestingly enough, Amdeck, uh, after about three years, got rebranded as Roland DG. And DG exists today as one of the world's largest manufacturers of digital output devices, uh, oh, yeah, print, large uh, format printers, printers, large format uh, printers. Uh, digital desktop, digital fabrication, things like this. But their heritage was actually DIY music. So oh, we're kind of, in a way, we're reconnecting with some of that history. The other area that we're exploring is, is AI uh, and continuing that exploration, but trying to find ways that people can interact with AI in a more musical, in a more immediate way. Right. Uh, and, and so that's the basic proposal of Project Lydia. So we're going to spend the next several months uh, with this current version of Project Lydia just trying to get people's reaction to it. Take a survey, talk to us, try it where we've got it set up for people to try. 
Um, we've got a second phase planned, which uh, one of our team is going to probably talk about a little bit uh, in a moment. But right. uh, you know, if we if the positive feedback comes, then it might be something that people so can buy. So, in, in, in a kind of fray, in an elevator pit, what what is this? What does it do? Project Lydia is a neural sampling piece of hardware, and what neural sampling does is it allows us to take um, a model that's been trained on a sound set and superimpose the characteristics of that model onto an input audio signal. When I first kind of tried to get my head around this, me and you, I think, sharing the same vintage, I was thinking, so this is kind of a very advanced AI-powered vocoder in a way where we've got a carrier signal and a modulator signal, mm. and, and it is that, but as I think you'll see as we demonstrate this, where a vocoder or traditional digital signal processing is very linear. You've got a, a, yeah. a, a signal that gets processed to an output stage and you can modify some things in the DSP to create a different result. When you're working with a model that's a very different correspondence uh, and changes to the input signal actually can have a more dramatic impact so it on what you're hearing. So the configuration of yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Right, the okay. How the model responds to what's coming into it and informing it has a potentially a very dramatic, very dynamic musical effect on, on, on what you're hearing. Okay, well that's yeah. exciting. So uh, we're going to have a look at the hardware now, right? With, we're going to have a look uh, at the hardware with Mr. Yazawa. Mr. Yazawa, um, lovely to meet you. So nice to meet you. New hardware, exciting I guess. Yes. So tell me a little bit about how this is set up. Yes, uh, this is uh, uh, called uh, Lydia Phase 1 and uh, this is the first prototype and it has uh, four uh, rotary encoders to control several parameters in the uh, Newton uh, Mo4 application and also there is uh, two foot switches and one is uh, bypassing and uh, turn on the effect and the other one is for uh, changing models uh, it's a kind of patch uh, of the uh, sound. And so these are uh, parameters. And uh, so here, uh, the, uh, this device uh, can easily make uh, a modification. So uh, we, uh, we employed this uh, one panel mm -hmm. and uh, with the uh, four knobs are uh, on that uh, panel. But uh, you can easily change that. Uh, yeah, because this, this looks like it's... Re so these are just controls that are interfacing to right, the right. computing device right, inside, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and uh, so and AI is a kind of... The, uh, just began, uh, so applying to the uh, uh, musical instrument. Right. So, and uh, we need to uh, kind of uh, catch on the try. And uh, so we, will go we are going to... Um, update user interface and uh, make as many experiments. So uh, this one is a... Uh, it's like a guitar pedal type right, format, right? Right, so, right, yeah. right. And, and then we've got, obviously, you've got access to the ports around the side. Yes, yes. And uh, inside the uh, Lydia, uh, there is a Raspberry Pi uh, 5 is uh, inside. And uh, one more module is a Raspberry Pi Pico. Right, so yeah. very, I mean, for most people who do DIY, yes. like, this is very familiar yes. kind of yes. stuff, right? Yes, and uh, so we choose this uh, standard uh, development uh, platform because uh, there's a lot of uh, source code and uh, resources, so uh, everybody can uh, easily uh, yeah. make uh, DIY with this device. And uh, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is uh, used for uh, controlling the user interface. So this oh, right, so that interface is with this yes, board, right? Yes. Okay, so that gives you the digital right, control. Right. Okay. And uh, here is a USB cable uh, from Pico to Raspberry Pi Five. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, this is a USB MIDI. So. <laughs> ah, okay. So, so it's a it's a it's a bit of DIY going yes, on. Yes, the, yeah, yes. already. You're, you're so right. is the idea with this to once you've got to a certain point to be able to then get it out into the world and have people develop ideas for it? Is that the kind? Yes. Of yes. That that's a, exactly that our concept. Yes. And will people? Do you think? make their own versions of these or will you do yes. different models? Different mo mo model and uh, also you can modify these uh, interface and uh, uh, these labels and yeah. uh, if necessary you paint it on, uh, and uh, so yeah. on. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Mm. Interesting, so this uh, as it stands is kind of ready to go so it's working now, it's processing. Yes, yes. Oh, so interesting. let's try. Uh, Next. Make some noise, next, okay. Yes. Next, next, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Alfie, um, you are involved in what the development of the hardware and the software is. Well, it's the software side, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm from uh, Newtone. So, we are dealing with the 
um, the, the models that are running on the device. And um, you were very kind enough to feature uh, Newshead Morpho in the past, I think, on right. uh, Sonic State. And basically what it, what it does is, um, as Paul described, it's essentially sound goes in, the um, kind of characteristics of the model are applied to that sound, and then you get this kind of transformation, which is very fun to play with in real time. Um, and that's why we think having it in hardware form is just is fantastic. OK, well, I'm guessing we probably need to play with it in real time then. Let's yes, let's go does. for it. Yeah, let's do it. So you've got um, the J6 and the T8 got there. The classics here, yes. Yep. Um, so what's happening? You're just running those into the audio input? That's right, yeah. They're just going straight in. Um, so okay, I, so you've got this. This is an audio interface that's then going in this way at the moment. For, yeah, so for the current, um, this current iteration of Project Lydia, we're, we're using some external I.O., um, but um, we imagine that will change very soon. Um, so, yeah, I mean, would you like to have a play? Would you like no, to have I a play? can't play and film at the same <laughs> okay. time. It's a little tricky. That's all right. So let me put some headphones on. I can hear what I'm doing. So if I start us off, we've got just a basic pattern going on here. And um, this current model here is a kind of Tyco sound. So obviously you're keeping the groove um, intact. Okay. But so it's that's... being, you know. Uh, so there's, there sounds like there are jingly bits. Exactly, you've got all of those uh, things. Big big sticks and smaller sticks and lighter hits. That's and right. Hits, yep. right. So it's, it's capturing kind of the, it's picking up on, so if there's hats going in or kind of more like sibilant, um, Things that's going to be reflected in what the model. So is is that sort of shaky thing hmm. a traditional Tyco part? Exactly. Of, ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, but the beautiful thing about this is, of course, um, it's going to react to, to to what we send in. So the kick. We're just sending a kick right now. I can make it a little bit. Because that's the kind of mix wet dry. Um, let me go full wet again. And then what we can do with here is we're actually going hands on with the. Um, Kind of the, the model architecture here, we can actually make some adjustments to the way it understands or perceives the input signal. So tweaking it this way, we get kind of more bass. Um, so it's looking for kind of a, a larger drum, I suppose, in, in the training data. And of course, if you go the other way, we get higher pitch sounds. So right, okay. it's, it's, it says tone, so you might think, oh, is that an EQ of some kind? But actually, it's more of a um, kind of a neural EQ. It's, it's looking for things that are relevant inside the training So it's data. responding dynamically to what's coming in, but also by being then modified further with uh, user input. Right. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> that's right. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And um, so if we switch up models here, if I go to, so if I, just here. We've switched over to kind of a, a model trained on uh, speaking voice, as you can hear there. What's kind of fun here is it will pick up on, of course, uh, the pitch of the... Right, right okay, bass going on that. here. And so the voice will interpret that kind of bass line. Um, and you can get some interesting kind of boost the resonance on this kind of 303 sound. Her voice will get this kind of acid kind of effect to it yeah. at the same time. Um, so of course everything that you do before the input is going to have that kind of reaction. So um, uh, as Paul was saying, it's not like a static kind of uh, vocoder effect. It's really reacting to whatever you push through. And that's why it's just so much fun to play with with different kinds of inputs and having it as part of a, a larger signal chain. So in terms of pitching and, and kind of, you know, what it can deal with, I mean, say if you were playing a guitar into it where mm -hmm. traditionally, you know, you dig in a bit harder, you get a bit more drive. Can you have that level of sort of dynamic feel or is there a certain amount of latency thrown? What sort I mean, of there is uh, there's a certain amount of latency here. Obviously, the the, the external I/O is is limiting us a little bit. Right, so stage, I'm in, in this stage, so yeah. yeah. But um, it's absolutely playable. I've had great fun, you know, jamming with it. I can show you in a second if if you like. Um, but yeah, it does react to your to your playing in a really kind of like hands-on kind of textural way, um, and yeah, it's it's really good fun. I mean. It, I'm not sure if you want to swap over. We can do. Yeah. Um, well, well, how, yeah. Before you do that, just one more hmm. question. I mean, how many models do you, you know are you developing? So presumably you're starting off. Obviously, Tyco makes a lot of sense. Voice mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. What's the kind of idea of the number of library of models it will drive? Well, Is that in, limited. In, it's um, it's it's given that it's uh, kind of Raspberry Pi under the hood. You can. Whatever the storage capacity is of the device, which you can change yourself. Um, but these models are fairly small in terms of size, only about 30 megabytes each, so it's very kind of efficient. Um, but 
in the spirit of DIY, we want people to train their own models right. and go out and capture the sounds around them. And that's really like the, the embodying this, this idea of um, kind of neural sampling. Right, right. It's, oh, I um, see, yes. We want people to be able to you know, find sounds that they, it could be uh, like field recordings, you know, not necessarily musical inputs. Um, and then they can be made musical by and this it, transformation. Is that just, do you have to transform it sort of in the box and then load the model onto the Pi, or can you just load the sample into a folder and then have it do its thing? How does it...? As, so yeah, so there's no training uh, on the device. No, that um, would be asking a lot of a Pi. Okay. <laughs> you could do it, but it'd probably take about a week or so, I don't know. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, so currently that's, that's kind of the workflow. Right. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's about being having something personal to you, basically, that you can perform with. And it's monophonic audio processing at the moment, or does it, does it not matter? Um, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, its understanding of, of pitch is, is not quite as black and white as, as you know, we're used to, to dealing with in terms of you know, pitch and kind of polyphony. Right, okay. Um, but um, so you could train something on chords, and it would give you chords back um, if, if you wanted to. Interesting. So you wanted to show me something else? What well, yeah. I mean, I'd, I would like to play some guitar for you, and then okay. we can uh, we can swap these out. So Alfie sat down now and plugged in a guitar. We go guitar into an amp sim, and then into an interface and back into this other model here. So what, this is your raw sound we're hearing right so now. So this is, yeah, it's just a kind of clean guitar signal. Okay, and then when I switch this on, if I may. Yes. Which model? Okay, is that Tyco again? So we've got the same Tyco model here. Um, but if you want to cycle through, we can get some different sounds perhaps. Okay, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody else better do that. <laughs> the glamorous assistant. So that, that's sort of sort of voice, isn't it? Wow, interesting. Yeah, and this is trained on kind of like spoken word kind of material, which is why it gives that kind of like. So it's kind of interesting. Oh. Paul channeling a bit of uh, Pete Sambora there, I think. I have Richie Sambora. <laughs> um, but the, 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 yeah, the fun one here is, uh, I think it's the next one. Uh, no, sorry, we'll go one more, yeah. There we go. So, a little bit of comic relief, really, but... Uh, so is that a kind of growl or a roar? It's, or, it's yeah. a death metal vocal. It's a, exactly, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's like a, a death, death metal kind of... Okay, interesting. And if I play low, you get kind of... Oh, so you've tweaked it all the way there. So, go on. Uh, so here we're on the, the edge of the kind of tone, I suppose, which is why we're getting these kind of like screamy kind of sounds. You can go all the way back. You get more kind of guttural sounds. Wow, okay. Um, but it's just really fun to play. It's just, uh, How interesting. So I'm guessing as you get more models, more musical kind of like context, mm. it's going to become clearer as to what this thing is. But yeah, yeah. as a concept, I mean, you're kind of rocking, right? It's, it's really good fun. It's, and um, we want it to be personal. You know, we only need around one hour of audio for, for kind of training your own model, right. um, which we think is you know, fairly reasonable if you want to you know, just go out with a portable recorder and, and capture the world around you, or maybe it's your own music, you know, perhaps you've, you've got some stems or some finalized music that you want to kind of m make sound like you. Right. Um, um, that's totally so is this well. currently mono input or will it take a stereo input? This is actually stereo right now. So you um, could process stereo, interesting. Mm. So could you process one mix with another mix, for instance? I mean, that's, we haven't, we could probably try it. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking you no, to no, say no, that. No, 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 but yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, like in not. 10 minutes, please. No, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> so, I mean, but the, so as the, uh, as you sort of develop and you explore, these mm. applications and these ideas will just come to the surface. That's the yeah, plan, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and this is obviously uncharted territory, really. We, we want to know what people are going to do with it. Um, the musical applications are um, kind of TBD, really. Um, and, and that's for the community to, to decide, I suppose. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Alfie. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much.